The five love languages is something I'm very passionate about. I've, it came into my life um, through a uh, from challenging circumstances in my own marriage that dissolved. And while I've been a patent lawyer for 20 years and talked many times about that subject, patents, trademarks, and copyrights, I've not very often spoken about the five love languages. In fact, never in a public forum before. So <laughs> I'm feeling a little a little uh, uneasy about it, thinking that many of you might think I'm crazy for actually even bringing up this subject in this context. But I think it's a very valuable subject. Uh, my own journey brought me to this book, The Five Love Languages. And it's written by Gary, Dr. Gary Chapman. It's uh, been read by millions of people around the world. Uh, it's a New York Times bestseller for five, six, seven years at least. Uh, there's a whole family of books around it now. It's been translated into 29 different languages. So it's had a huge impact in the world. And I think that its impact is still way too small for the power of the book. Uh, Rick, I already asked you how many people read the book. But if you read the book, put your hand back up. How many of you actually know what your favorite love languages are? We see some hands, a lot of hands coming down. Uh, the five of what, what Gary Chapman figured out is that there's five ways that we have as humans to convey love from one person to another. Physical touch, quality time, words of affirmation, acts of service, and gifts. These are the only five ways there are to convey love from one person to another. Moreover, he discovered that we also have favorite ways. My favorite ways are physical touch and quality time. Most people who don't know the five love languages don't even know, only know their favorite ways of receiving love. So if, if love doesn't come into their life in their, their favorite way, they don't recognize it as love. So that creates a problem sometimes where we have a mismatch. We have someone ex expressing love in a language that's their, their favorite and someone on the other side who's intended to receive it and it's not their language. And so these, these can be, this, these situ this situation can arise and it creates a situation where we have ships passing in the night. And when ships pass in the, light, in the night and we don't have the kind of connection that we want, we can get frustrated. We don't feel like our needs are met. And all, oftentimes when we get frustrated, we're not very skilled at expressing that frustration in a way that can actually help us resolve it. Here we have a situation where our favorite love language of physical touch is meeting one, uh, an act of service. So the solution <laughs> is the solution is that we need some kind of a translation going on. We need some kind of wisdom to come in. And of course, this is a three-prong to two-prong adapter that many of us are familiar with. And we know that a plug that won't fit into another plug isn't any good. So in my experience in my life, I've found that when I'm aware of now that I'm aware of my favorite love languages, and when I get aware of the favorite love languages of the people that are important to me, my children, my, my siblings, uh, romantic interests that I have, then magic can happen. Because now we can actually connect and, and really meet each other's needs. And uh, so I invite you to find out what your favorite love languages are. Now, does this really matter in business? Does love matter in business? So I'm kind of new to this 20 second thing, so. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, according to statistics, 64% of people who actually leave their jobs leave because they feel unappreciated. 64% leave because they feel unappreciated. Now for me, that means that they leave because they feel unloved. They don't feel like they belong there. There's some, some mismatch going on there. Who on your team would you like to keep around for a long time? Do you want to make sure they feel loved and appreciated? Researchers have also found that 70% of the value of a buying experience for a customer relates to how the customer feels, that feels about how they were treated by that organization. How the customer feels about how they were treated by that organization. That's love. Yeah. Now here's, uh, these are tattoos of the Harley Davidson brand for people in the back who can't read that. These people love their brand so much. They love their experience with Harley Davidson so much they wanted to have it tattooed on themselves. This is intense. What if your, what if your customers loved you so much they want to put their brand on their bodies? <laughs> what would that do? What would that do for your business? Studies show that is team chemistry important in your organization. Studies show that NBA teams touch more, win more. Now love a love language. Physical touch is a love language. Waitresses who touch get bigger tips. 
What if you touched every customer you had in a way that was appropriate to them? What if... <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't, I don't want to lose the value of that point. What if, you, what if you knew the love languages of every one of your customers and you touched them, and, and you delivered your service in a way that optimized that experience for them? Uh, from the book Freakonomics, I learned that the, the biggest difference between doctors that are sued the most for malpractice and those that are sued the least for malpractice is three minutes per patient. Three minutes per patient. Another study I found that a small gift can make a huge difference. Giving, giving uh, mints with a, with a restaurant check can raise tips from as little as 3% to, if you do it the right way, can raise tips 21%. 21%. What if you figured out how to do that in your business? Um, kind of my closing point really is that I want people to know that love is not a four-letter word in business. We should be talking about love and figuring out ways to deliver more love because really love is about creating value for other people. And business, that's what business is, creating value for other people. Uh, I'm very passionate about this subject. I've organized my life around the five love languages. If you want to know more about that, feel free to contact me. I'm happy to talk about it. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. I invite all of you to reach out and connect with me. And um, I hope that each of you go out and discover what your five, your favorite love languages are. Thank you very much.